Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Abhishek. Uh, Generation is the first skilling program of McKinsey Social Initiative. In just two years of operation, sorry, in just two years of operations, uh, McKinsey Social Init Initiative's Generation program has become the largest demand-driven youth employment program with 89% job placements across five countries. If I were to talk about India, in India we have been into operations for just one year, little over one year, and uh, we have seen significant growth in key scale outcome and business uh, model, business case matrix. Let me talk to you in detail about that. Uh, in last one year, we enrolled more than 3,000 candidates. Of those, around more than 80% candidates got job offers, and an unparalleled 93% of them re retained in the jobs for at least three months. If you, at the same time, what, you, what, what we've been doing is to try and prove the business case for, for the long-term sustainability of the program, and in that we found that, well, just to kind of uh, link that with what Kiran was saying earlier, that employers usually haven't found the skilling programs of training companies either useful. And I, when I say that, that's primarily in form of saying that employers aren't contributing, the, contributing to the skilling programs. And, and towards that, what we found was that more than 25%, more than 25% of our uh, employer partners in India have committed to share the costs. In fact, in some of the, in some of the cases, more than 75% of the training costs are being covered by them. And the reason I think uh, why employers have been able to share the costs with us is that we have been able to show them a clear return on investment, whether it's the case in the case of productivity or the retention. How have we become so successful, or why have we been so successful in the first year itself? I think I, if I were to give you the reasons, primary reasons would be that we have looked at the entire skilling value chain and tried to solve for each of the problems or challenges that exist in the skilling, sec skilling uh, industry and bring in disruptive impact on that. I'm going to talk about three or four quick examples examples of what we've been able to do. Uh, and those of you who have been into skilling will, I think, identify with that. One of the major challenges that you face in the beginning of the skilling value chain is, do you have jobs for the candidates who are going to be training? So in that case, we've been able to, you know, our program being a demand-driven program ensures that the jobs are available even before the candidates have begun. Secondly, uh, in general, what we've seen is that 30 to 40 percent in case some cases where the programs are well run, 20 percent candidates actually drop out or do not take up the job offers, which basically leads to saying that there is some kind of an expectation mismatch in the candidates when they go to the jobs or when they find what the kind of jobs are, they find that these are not meant for them. So we have institutionalized something called a week zero, which I could talk to you later about, but it is primarily a on the job learning for candidates right in the beginning of the course, so that if they find that they, this job is not for them, they drop out and we do not invest into those candidates who are not interested in the jobs. Similarly, I think the biggest problem after that that comes in is that of attrition. I think employers, training partners, governments all identify with this problem of candidates not staying in the job even for three months. So what we have done is, and, and that's been quite successful, is been that we have brought in trained psychologists to work with the candidates during the training and three months after they have gotten into the job. These trained psychologists work as mentors to the candidates and help the candidates introspect into the problems why they would want to attract. For example, we, we hear cases where candidates would say, you know, I was promised 6,000 rupees, but you know, this uh, contractor paid me 5,750 rupees. I think at that point in time, the mentor needs them to, need, you know, needs to 
kind of casual candidate into saying, does this 250 rupee really matter to you so much that you would quit the job? And what is the opportunity cost of quitting the job, finding another one after a month or so, or never finding them? And what we are realizing is that if this psychologist can create a rapport with the candidate, which, is the, which we are finding that they can, uh, the attrition rates come down significantly. And the last one that I want to talk to you about is to be able to look at the employers and say, why is it that employers are not willing to pay uh, for the costs? And can the answer be that employers do not see ROI in the first place for themselves? And are they? And what if they are not willing to invest enough time and energy into calculating the ROI for, from the skill training, the skilling that has happened? And for that, uh, we, what we started was to go to an independent agency which does the research to find out can you do a quick cal you know, uh, data collection for us to, to see ROI in terms of primarily two areas. One is the productivity that our candidates bring for the organization, and second, in terms of reduced costs for, uh, through attrition and rehiring. I'm so sorry. Let me quickly take you through uh, what happens to the costs when we bring in so many of the generation elements into the thing. If you, if you really look at it in a traditional method, our costs of training a candidate compared to an alternative model might be 1.5x. However, if you look at it from the lens of what placement rates have we been able to get, that is 80%, and then a retention rate of 93%, what you find is that there is a 2x impact, 2x impact in terms of, so if you lo really look at the numbers, you would find that uh, instead of this 36 to 45 candidates that remain in the job after, from the 100, our candidates, actually 74 of the candidates, remain in the jobs. And therefore, they deliver 2x the, num you know, 2x the amount of efficiency. And what we have found is that our costs per successfully employed candidate are 30% lower than the alternative models. I was talking to you about the ROI uh, that we calculate for employers and uh, collect the data for it. I wanted to give you a quick example of what we've done in uh, healthcare industry through our program in general duty assistant or nursing orderlies as we call them. What we found was that through the, in and, and this data by the way comes from the independent research agency, we found that if you take an example of 200 bed hospital which will require roughly 66 GDAs, you will find that 60 to 65 lakh rupees of saving in a year can be caused by just having well-trained candidates. And I wanted to quickly talk about, uh, wanted to quickly talk about the impact that we've been able to create on the lives of the graduates. Apart from, apart from calculating the data on salaries, which have gone 6x for our candidates, but I think that would happen in the most of the cases. Uh, I think what we found the most encouraging, encouraging thing for us was the outlook, outlook towards the life. Our candidates showed great future optimism about the life and, their, and the numbers across the, for their future life outlook raised up to nine points. Our graduates also agreed that Generation was a great program that affected their lives. Positively. Can you just talk about what you need from this group? Quickly. Yeah. yeah, I'll just go to that. So we have identified, sorry, yeah, we have identified three kind of partnerships. Uh, there would be funder partnerships, employer partnerships, and training partner pro partnerships, where we would want our generation methodology to be used by the funding partners, employers, and training providers to improve the outcomes and the bottom lines for the training providers. The way we will do this, is as following. Generation, the CSR funder or the foundation would come together where generation will provide employer linkages to the last level wherein every employer will be connected by us and the demand would be created by us. We will provide the absolute cutting edge curriculum that will be completely mapped to the skilling required for that program. 
and we will do the complete ROI measurement for all the programs that we do. And, and we would want this generation methodology to be embedded into the programs that are being run by the skilling partners of the funding programs, fund, fund, uh, funders, or for that matter, even training providers who would want to engage with us on this. Um, sorry. So uh, apart from that, I'm sorry. Apart from that, um, I, I just wanted to, if you give me uh, 10 seconds more, I just wanted to share with you. We look at ourselves reaching the self-sustainability in a year's time from now. At this point in time, we are at a phase two of our operations. In the phase one, we were at a catalytic philanthropy level where we proved our model. At this point in time, we are at a shared cost level where employers and students are partially funding the cost. And in the third model, we want to reach the self-sustainability with 100% self-financing. That's where we reach a scale of 300,000 in the next year. Thank you for hearing me out. And uh, uh, I'd like to uh, engage with each one of you who would like to engage with us on the generation methodology. Thank you. Thank you. I have a quick question. Has McKinsey done this model in any other developing part of the world? I mean, or is this unique for India? No, so we, we work in five countries. Yeah. Kenya and Mexico also does this, do these numbers, and they've been doing it for a little far longer than we have been. So it's a for proven, close to it's years. A proven yes. model of... Uh, That's right. Okay. Questions? Yes, please. Uh, finally, a hand from the back. Can somebody get a mic across? No, 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 you can't. It'll be too far. Hi, I'll wait for the prize as well, Ganesh. Um, uh, so my, I'm Meenu, and I represent an organization called Prava. Uh, a, a question around your, you, you talked about sustaining, uh, the, the young people sustaining in their jobs for three months, and that's what you've been tracking. And I think that's a standard way that it gets tracked in the sector. But in our own experience of it, it's actually, there's a need to track whether they stay on for longer, because three months is fairly simple. Uh, what happens and how do you ensure that they sustain their jobs for longer term because that's what's going to actually create a sustainable livelihood. Sure. Uh, so, so one is that I didn't talk about is that uh, we, we, we are actually tracking the candidates for six months and more. However, uh, this remains an open question as to how do you continue to track the candidates, a significant number of candidates over a long period of time. That's something that we are also looking at. But, but what we found in general, in, at least in my experience, is that if you could track a candidate for six months and if she is continuing in the job, that's a, that's a good proxy for saying that they have adopted to, adopted to the working environment and will continue in the jobs, unless some, there are some other reasons. So, Abhishek, just a bit more about the self-sustainability thing you said in the last. So phase two would be how much would students pay, what percentage the employer is paying, and how will you see it? In the Sorry, uh, can, can you, you repeat hold that? the mic a little closer to you? I was saying, uh, can you just uh, elaborate on the last slide, which was on self-sustainability, where you said uh, phase two was where students were paying, so how much were they paying, how much were employees kind of percentage paying, and yeah. how, does you, how do you see it sure. going up? To so, uh, as I was saying that in case of employers, we have found employers who are willing to contribute up to 70% of the training costs. That's a, that's, a, that's a number that we already are seeing at this stage. Uh, we also have some discussions going on with employers who would be willing to take care of 100% of the direct costs. Uh, as far as uh, student funding is concerned, uh, there are certain indications right now in the programs in the FNB particularly, where we think that there is a possibility of uh, charging a fee which ranges from 25% to 30% of the total training cost at this point in time. And, and if, if you've seen the slides, the, if, if there is any gap there, we are hoping that government fills in for that. 